Good morning, everybody. I think we'd all agree that photographs can be really powerful. And one of the most iconic photographs of the Earth was taken on this day, December 7, in 1972, by the crew of Apollo 17 on their way to the moon. And it's known as the Blue Marble. Here's a photograph of a German V-2 rocket taking off during World War II. So at the end of World War II, we captured most of the top German rocket scientists like this man, Werner von Braun, who ended up working for NASA. And a lot of our early rocket designs were either copies of the V-2 or even the V-2 itself. The first place to test rockets was White Sands, New Mexico. Here's a picture from the Rocket Museum there. And maybe perhaps some of you have visited that. And the big question was how high can we get? Can we get higher than airplanes? Can we get through these various layers of the atmosphere? So this photograph from 1946 was the first picture taken of the Earth from outer space. It was from a camera on a V-2 rocket, a German rocket that had taken off from White Sands, New Mexico. This one from 1959 was the first photograph taken from orbit. Not very clear, but supposedly that's the Central Pacific, but it's cloudy. This photograph from 1960 was the first taken from a weather satellite. So it's much better than the one before still in black and white. And this one from 1966 is the first photograph of the Earth from an object in outer space, that being the moon. Uh, this was from one of the uh, satellites that went around the moon. Well, in the mid-60s, the Apollo program was started. This was the series of flights that eventually put a man on the moon and you know, there are many flights to the moon. And the photography really got better during this time period. Now here's the first photograph of the Earth in color, the full Earth. Uh, this was taken by a satellite. And it's really remarkable compared to some of the other ones. And this fellow, Stuart Brand, really pushed NASA to make that photograph public. He was kind of a hippie and he loved science and he really wanted to get the word out about we need to care for the planet. So finally NASA released the photo and he used it in his publication, The Whole Earth Catalog, as the cover. And here you can see that. And some of you might recall reading The Whole Earth Catalog. Now this is known as the Earthrise photo. This was taken from the moon or around the moon on Christmas Eve in 1968. It's a beautiful photograph of the Earth in color. But this is the first photograph of all of the Earth in color taken by a human. It's called the Blue Marble, 1972 on this date by the crew of the Apollo 17 uh, spacecraft. Uh, it's just a wonderful picture of the Earth and you can even see a cyclone in there. And the camera they used was this one, a 70 millimeter Hasselblad with an 80 millimeter Zeiss lens. A large format camera, uh, the bigger the negative, the better the picture. Here you can see a picture of the astronaut using the Hasselblad. They did not use the Hasselblad on the moon itself. They used a custom made camera because they needed something really light. But in the spacecraft they could use this kind of a camera. It was also at this time period in the early 70s that a growing awareness of the environment occurred. Earth Day, for instance, was in April of 1970. It was also in 1970 that President Nixon established the Environmental Protection Agency. And these images of the Earth suspended in the blackness of space made it look kind of fragile. And that appealed to people. Now here's another kind of a blue marble. This is 2012. This is with digital photography, color enhancements, cropping, so the pictures are getting better and better. And this one is nicknamed the black marble. This is also from 2012. It's a nighttime view of our half of the earth and you can see the lights uh, of the United States here pretty clearly.
So we are just a small part of the Milky Way. I think we'd all agree that photography has helped us understand the depth and the beauty of the universe.